In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, how to evaluate the inverse secant function using a calculator. So in some of the earlier videos, we talked about evaluating inverse trig functions uh, using the unit circle, so without a calculator. And that's good if uh, you know we're evaluating at nice numbers that appear on the unit circle, but uh, most of the time you might have to evaluate with a number that's not so nice, uh, one that's not on the unit circle, so you'll have to uh, turn to a calculator. But um, most graphing calculators uh, don't have an inverse secant function. They typically only have an inverse cosine, inverse sine, and inverse tangent. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, and we already know that unfortunately, uh, inverse secant of x is not equal to the reciprocal of the inverse cosine of x. Okay, so we, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that that's not true because we know for the regular trig functions, we know that this uh, is true, right? That's what the secant function is, one divided by cosine of x. But this is not true for the inverse trig functions. So we already talked about that in an earlier video. Uh, but now, um, what we are going to do, though, is uh, find a different relationship between inverse secant and inverse cosine. So uh, first what we have to do is remember what the range of both of those functions is. So what's uh, secant inverse of x has range zero to pi over two, like that, and then union pi over two to pi. Okay, so remember, when you evaluate an inverse trig function, your answer is, can be interpreted as an angle on the unit circle, uh, is one way of thinking about it. So remember, we evaluate trig functions like uh, secant of theta, we evaluate trig functions at angles, and then we get a number as a result. So when we do inverse trig, we evaluate inverse trig at a number, uh, and we get an angle for our result. So, um, if our result for the secant inverse of x, if the result is between 0 and pi, but not pi over 2, then what's that going to look like? Well, that would be something like this. So, uh, dotted line up here, because we don't include pi over 2. So, this shaded part right here, this is everything between 0, okay, this right here is 0, and then this right here is pi over 2. Okay, so that's everything in here. And then union with this part here, from pi over 2 to pi, that's everything in here. Okay, because again, here's pi over 2, and then here's pi radians right here. So if we go all the way around, that's going to be pi radians, right? Uh, pi radians there. So that's what, this, uh, that's what the range of the inverse secant looks like if we, interpreted, uh, if we interpret these values as angles. Okay? So what if we do the same thing with uh, inverse cosine? Inverse cosine has range 0 to pi. So remember, we talked about these in earlier videos when we uh, introduced the uh, inverse trig functions. So what does that range look like? Well, it looks actually pretty much the same, except instead of the dotted line, we have a solid line up there. So here's a 0 is right here, pi is right here, and we get everything in between. So that's going to be shaded like this. So what do we notice here? We notice that these are exactly the same, except for this does not include pi over 2, this one does include pi over 2, but that actually does not matter for our purposes. Okay, that's uh, totally fine. It's not going to affect anything at all. So one thing we want to point out is that um, if the inverse secant of x, if the value is in the first quadrant, then the value of the inverse cosine of x is also in the first quadrant. Okay? And uh, similarly, if the inverse secant of x, if that value is in the second quadrant, then for the inverse cosine of x, the value is also in the second quadrant. Okay. So in other words, uh, the inverse secant of x and the inverse cosine of x, uh, both of these values, they're, they're either both in quadrant 1 or both in quadrant 2. So that's really nice, uh, because now what we can do is uh, something to kind of relate these two together. So how do we relate them together? So let's uh, come down here, maybe use a different color. Okay, so let's say here's our coordinate axes, and we'll draw a right triangle in the first quadrant. And again, we know that inverse secant of x and inverse cosine of x, they're going to be in the first quadrant together or in the second quadrant together. But whatever's going on, they're both in the same quadrant. Um, okay, so let's call this theta, and then we'll call this side A, this side B, this side C. Okay, okay so... Um, we're just going to do some right triangle trig here. So we know that the secant of theta, 
is what? Remember the secant of theta in a right triangle, what's that? That's gonna be uh, the reciprocal of the cosine, so it's gonna be hypotenuse over adjacent. So if this is theta, then the secant of theta is C divided by A. C divided by A. And what's the cosine of theta? Well, we just kind of said it, the cosine of theta is, uh, well, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so uh, these guys are actually reciprocals of each other, so cosine is going to be the reciprocal of that. Or you can look at the right triangle and say, okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, A over C. Okay. Okay, now if uh, the secant of theta is C divided by A, then what we can do is take the inverse secant of both sides. So take the inverse secant of both sides, and then what we're going to get is this. Uh, if we take the inverse secant of secant of theta, then we just get theta. And then inverse secant of c over a is just, just that, inverse secant of c over a. We can't do anything else with that. Likewise, over here, what we're going to do is take the inverse cosine of both sides. So the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta is just theta. And here, the inverse cosine of a over c is just, just that, inverse cosine of a over c. Okay. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, all we've done so far is we just set up a right triangle in the first quadrant, and we uh, labeled it like so, A, B, and C, and then we said, okay, using right triangle tricks, secant of theta is this, cosine of theta is that. Now let's take the inverse function of both sides for both of these equations. Okay? So if secant of theta is C over A, take the inverse secant of both sides, we get this. Cosine of theta is A over C, take the inverse cosine of both sides, we get this. Okay, now notice, what do we have here? We have theta equals this, and theta equals that. So what we have is uh, this theta, this is the same theta, okay, it's this theta right here, it equals these two different things. So if this equals theta, and that equals theta, then this uh, has to equal that. Okay, these two things equal the same thing, so these two things have to equal each other. So let's come down here and write that. Uh, now what we have is that secant inverse of C over A equals cosine inverse of A over C. Okay. And again, uh, the reason is because this side equals theta, and this side also equals theta. So if both of these guys equal theta, then they have to equal each other. Okay. So that's just kind of the transitive property there. Um, so anyway, now inverse secant of C over A equals inverse cosine of A over C. How does that help us? Well, remember, C over A and A over C, they're reciprocals, right? So what we can do is say this. Let's come off to the side and say, uh, note, Uh, a over C is the reciprocal of C over A. In other words, A over C is one divided by C over A, like that. Okay. So let's make no, uh, let's make use of that fact. So inverse secant of C over A equals the inverse cosine of, and what we just saw was that A over C is one divided by C over A. So what we're going to do is write one divided by C over A in here. Okay. Now, how does that help us? So first of all, let's come up here so we have a little more room. Now, uh, what do we see here? Blah, 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 C over A, blah, 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 C over A. So here's C over A, here's C over A again. So more generally, what we have is that the inverse secant of a thing equals the inverse cosine of one over that thing. Okay, whoops, so that's what's going on there. So inverse secant of C over A is the inverse cosine of 1 over C over A. But more generally, the inverse secant of a thing is just the inverse cosine of 1 over that thing. Okay, so here, that thing is C over A. Okay, C over A is C over A. But since uh, this is just some arbitrary triangle in the, in the first quadrant, okay, it's just some arbitrary triangle in the first quadrant, then A, B, and C are really just kind of arbitrary values um, subject to certain restrictions, like of course C is positive because it's the hypotenuse. Uh, and A is positive because we're in the first quadrant and so on, but those restrictions actually don't matter. Uh, but the point is, we can be more general than this. So the point is, inverse secant of something equals inverse cosine of 1 divided by that thing. So we can be more general than just C over A. So actually, instead of C over A, we can just say X. Okay, so, uh, and what we have then, putting all that together, is the inverse secant of X equals the inverse cosine of 1 divided by x. And again, the reason is that, remember, we got uh, all the way down to here, and then we said, okay, a over c is the reciprocal of c over a. It's 1 over c over a. And then we rewrote this like that. So inverse secant of c over a is inverse cosine of 1 over c over a. 
then we can just say, okay, well, I can be more general than that and say, instead of C over A, you know, this here is C over A, this here is C over A, so let me just call that X instead. Because the point is, inverse secant of whatever is in here is the same thing as the inverse cosine of 1 over whatever is in here, okay? So that's what's going on there. So let's just call that thing X, and then that's, that's our result. So, yes, as it turns out, the inverse secant of X does equal the inverse cosine of 1 over X, and this is what we can use to evaluate inverse secant on a graphing calculator. Okay? So, let's go ahead and do that with a few examples. So we can do this on a graphing calculator because graphing calculators do have uh, inverse cosine. Graphing calculators, and I think most scientific calculators also. So let's erase uh, all this stuff here. We don't really need that anymore. Okay, so... Uh, example one. So let's say we want to evaluate uh, the inverse secant of 10. Well, how do we do that? Well, we know that uh, the inverse secant of x is the inverse cosine of the reciprocal of x. So the inverse secant of 10 is the inverse cosine of the reciprocal of 10, which is 1 tenth. So what we can do is take a graphing calculator and plug in uh, the inverse cosine of 0 0.1. Okay, 1 tenth, that's 0 0.1. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's a TI-89. You have a TI-83, it's pretty much going to work the same way. Um, there's going to be an inverse cosine function. So what we're going to do is find the inverse cosine of 0 0.1. So let's zoom in here. So... Uh, Okay, on the TI-89, here's the inverse cosine, diamond Z, and then uh, inverse cosine of 0 0.1. Make sure we're in radian mode, unless we're explicitly told to be in degrees. Uh, so then inverse cosine of 0 0.1 is about 1.4706. So this is about, we'll zoom out here, this is about 1.4706. Okay, so that's the answer for example 1. So again, how do we do that? Well, we just uh, we saw earlier in the video that the inverse secant of x is the inverse cosine of the reciprocal of x. So if we want to evaluate the inverse secant of 10, we just find the inverse cosine of the reciprocal of 10, which is 1 tenth, which is 0 0.1. Okay? That's example 1. How about example 2? Example 2 is find the inverse secant of... 7.2. So we know that uh, the inverse secant of x is the inverse cosine of 1 over x. So the inverse secant of 7.2 is the inverse cosine of 1 over 7.2. Okay. So let's just toss that into the calculator exactly as it is. Uh, inverse cosine of 1 over 7.2. So let's come back here. Okay, and we'll get our inverse cosine again, and then uh, that's going to be 1 over 7.2. And we see that that's about 1.4315, let's say, if we're going to round to the nearest. So that's about, oops, zoom out a little bit, 1.4315. Okay, so that's that. And then one more example, just to kind of get the points uh, solidified there. So example three. Let's say we want to evaluate the uh, arc secant of negative 143.829. Okay. So notice here we're saying arc secant instead of uh, secant inverse, but that changes absolutely nothing. So remember that this is just a notation that means uh, the inverse secant function. So it's all exactly the same. So we just still do it the exact same way. The inverse secant of some number is the inverse cosine, which we could also call arc cos if we want, um, of the reciprocal of that number. So the reciprocal of this is going to be negative 1 over 143.829. Okay. So then we're just going to go back to the calculator, toss this in there as it is. 
and then see what we get. So let's zoom in on that. Okay, so again, we want our uh, inverse cosine, so diamond Z for inverse cosine, and then uh, negative one over 143.829. And that's about 1.5777. Okay. So that's the answer to example three. Approximately 1.5777. Okay. So that's uh, how we evaluate inverse secant using a graphing calculator, um, an explanation, and three examples.